So you've been asked to do a best man speech and now you're panicking. You find yourself on YouTube because you're trying to pick up some tips. Well, don't worry because I've got you covered. I'm going to show you how to write a best man speech from the start all the way to the end in six easy steps. My name's Adam Anwar. I've been doing stand-up comedy now for three years. But more importantly, I did this best man speech which currently has about 25,000 views on YouTube. People come to it to pick up tips on how to do a best man speech, but I thought I would break it down for you and explain what I'm saying and why I'm saying it so that you can decide for yourself how you want to do it. Step number one is you've got to know your audience. So speak to the couple who's getting married and just ask them what can you get away with. So for example, when I was doing mine, they asked me, please don't swear if you can and also please don't be rude so straight away i was handcuffed a little bit but at least i knew what to do i didn't get all the way through the writing stage and all the way to the day and then they said oh whoa, whoa don't swear because imagine being in that situation where you've already written it you're in the last minute and now you've got to rewrite it and go wow i can't use half my stuff because there's too much swearing none of it makes sense anymore if i take out all the rude stuff you need to know that from day one so step number one Know your audience, find out what you can and cannot get away with. Because hey, there might be older people in the crowd who just won't appreciate that. And you don't want to spoil their day. You want everyone to have a nice day of things. But at the same time, maybe you're the brother of the groom. So maybe you know granddad's in the audience and granddad doesn't like it. But you're like, hey, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. In that instance, at least you know. But it's the same thing. You still got to know your audience. You know, You might not need to speak directly to the couple getting married because you might already know everyone who's going to be there and you can gauge it yourself but that's the first thing that you should be thinking of is what can I do and where can I get away with it same if there's going to be loads of young kids in the crowd you probably might not want to be talking about too many crude stories and that kind of thing but yeah figure that out first step number two is figure out how long you've got now in my experience from the best man speech that I did and go into other weddings five to ten minutes is the sweet spot because in five minutes you can get through all the niceties, all the things that you need to say, you can kind of get that all in in the first five minutes and then between five and ten minutes, you can kind of pad it out with a few funny stories or a few more sentimental things. Whichever way you want to go, you can add that bit of flavour to your best man speech to make it a bit less generic and make it more unique to you and more unique, more importantly, to the couple who's getting married. Step number three is you've got to know what tone of wedding speech you're going to go for now. What do I mean by that? I mean, is it going to be like an all-out roast? Are you just going to be slating the best man all the way through? This is why at the start I said, know your audience. Because to do this, you've got to know your audience. If he says, no swearing in this, and you want to do a roast, you can still do it. You can still hammer them, but you'll have to do it without swearing, without rude stories. You can just take mick out of them for all the kinds of stuff. But just know that there's certain things that you can't touch. Or you might want to go the complete opposite direction and go for a very emotional, a very connected, very loving best man speech. Because maybe you are brothers with the groom. And maybe that like you only could rely on each other all the way through your lives. And you really want to tell him in front of everyone, listen, you mean a lot to me. I love you so much. You know, you are the only person I could rely on and I wish you nothing but happiness. If that's the relationship you've got with him and you just want to express that through the entire speech... That's great as well if that's the route that you want to go down. And then there's a more of a hybrid approach, which is the direction that I personally took. I wanted it to be more of a jokey speech, but at the same time, linking it back to knowing your audience, I could have told lots of personal stories about the groom, Tom, that day. that A lot of people just wouldn't have understood. There would have been too much backstory that I would have had to explain, and it would have just dragged out, and it would have bored everybody there. That's one thing to think of as well. With the time thing that I mentioned earlier is... Weddings can be a long day. Sure, they're a fantastic occasion, you know, everyone's in a happy mood, but there's a lot of pomp and circumstance and ceremony that's involved in it. And your speech can end up being a part of that if you drag it on for too long. So, know the kind of tone that you want to go for. So I realised I can't just do all personal stories and I've got to frame the stories in a certain way that they can all get a good laugh out of it without boring them by being like, hey, everyone, this wedding is really all about me when I'm not even the one getting married because you don't want to be that guy, do you? So how I did that and how I blended those two approaches together with the more emotional side of things and the more jokey side of things was at the start, I did very, very softly, softly, nicely, nicely kind of things like, oh, thank you all very much for coming. 
thank you Tom and Liz for all inviting us to this day because I wanted the audience to know that like I was building it around them and I did want to give all the nicey nice stuff because it was all genuine stuff but it's not all stuff that typically I wouldn't say in day to day life but I was kind of speaking on their behalf at this point so I wanted to include that in so that it gave me a base as well so that when I did the jokes later, the jokes meant something and I wasn't just some guy going, hey, I got 10 minutes on the mic. Let me just tell you a loads of private personal jokes. I wasn't trying to steal the stage. I was doing it for them, if that makes sense. But step number four, this is the most fun part of the entire process. It is the writing stage. And this is the part right now that you're probably watching this video for. All the three steps that I mentioned before, they're all very important to understand before you do this part. That's why I mentioned them all first, but this is the big main part. How do you write the actual speech? At this point, you're gonna need a pen and paper, so pause the video because you're gonna need to write a few headings down. Okay, so your first heading at the top of the page, I want you to write the word intro, okay? Then leave a bit of a gap, enough of a gap so you can write stuff in underneath it. And then the next one, I want you to write bride, okay? Once you've written bride, again, leave a space underneath, write groom. Again, same thing again, leave a bit of space, write bride's parents, more space. Groom's parents, more space. Bridesmaids, more space. Groomsmen, more space. Personal stories. Now, this is the part, personal stories, that's going to be you and the groom. And then at the bottom, write, wrap it up. And again, leave a bit of space underneath it. The reason why I wanted you to get a piece of paper and write these headings out and leave space underneath is now you don't have to sit there and write a full speech. You've got the headings for your entire speech there now. Everything that you need to talk about in your speech is written on the paper. You just need to figure out what you're going to write about each one. So, for example, under the word intro, you might want to write stuff like, I would just like to welcome everybody to blah de blah and blah de blahs wedding. Thank you all very, very much for coming. And just like that, you've already got the start of your speech. Boom, that's done. That's one heading done. Now you just do the same for each heading going down. And now with this, you kind of don't need to go in any particular order, but I'm just going to go from top to bottom. But when you're actually doing it, you might want to write along with me in this video, or maybe write some of the ideas down that I mentioned, but you can do it in any kind of order. So under bride, think of something you can just mention about the bride. A nice, easy thing is just say, oh, doesn't the bride look lovely today? And this is the glorious part of writing a wedding speech, is that everyone there is up for having a good time. Everyone wants to enjoy the speech. They're not judging you, and they're all going to politely clap every time you give them a pause to clap. So remember that when you're performing it, but I'll get to that later on in the video. Another thing is, the stuff that you say, it doesn't need to be true, especially all the nicey-nice stuff that you're saying in the speech. You can kind of lie. Now, I'm not saying that I lied when I did my speech, but there was a lot of stuff that I included in my speech that, not that it wasn't true, I just didn't know it to be true. So, for example, under bridesmaids, I wrote, wow, don't they all look lovely today? Where, like, I'd never seen the bridesmaids. At this point, when I wrote the speech, like a month before, two weeks before, whatever it was, I had no idea the bridesmaids were. I had no idea what they were going to look like. They could have looked like absolutely anything, but... I wrote that in the speech just because it's a nice thing to say. If you're one of the bridesmaids, you're going to react well to it. And the more people you can get on board in your speech, the better. Then we have the lovely bridesmaids. Don't they all look great? Yeah. Yeah. I also use this as well as a chance to throw in a little joke. Because the more jokes that you get and the more laughs that you get through your speech, the easier it becomes because people are laughing, they're on board, they're like, hey, I like this guy, he's a bit cheeky, but he's quite nice as well, because you've done all the niceties. That's the way that I did it. <laughs> and then we've got the groomsmen, who in comparison look like a bunch of potatoes. Like <laughs> now go down the page and just keep writing stuff in. Under groom, you can write stuff like, oh, I'm so glad that he's inviting me today because, you know, we're so close because of blah -de blah Explain how you know each other and why you are so close and why he's chosen you and what that means to you as well, that he's chosen you as best man. This will create a kind of emotional connection between you and the audience and it will make you sound more genuine. You can lie. You can say stuff that aren't specifically true, but as long as they sound nice and are kind of true, 
you can get away with it. So again, what I said about the groom at the start of the speech was, we've known each other for eight years, he's like a brother to me. Now, he kind of is like a brother to me. We lived together for a year, we talked to each other every single day, so we kind of are like brothers in that aspect, you know what I mean? Now, in, in day-to-day -day life, I'd never look at him and go, ah, he's like a brother to me. I'd never be like, hey, you're like a brother to me, but... When you're writing a nice, nice speech like this, you can think of these kind of emotions that you generally wouldn't think of or really express in day-to-day -day life and go, do you know what? It actually is true. He is kind of like a brother to me. I'm going to write that and I'm going to say it like I mean it as well because it's true. And I want everyone to be there like, oh, this is such a nice speech. And I also want to say nice things about him because it's his wedding day after all. So I mentioned earlier as well about the niceties of the wedding speech. There's a certain things that you've got to say in a wedding speech, or at least I felt like I had to say in a wedding speech that I put in there. So you can just put these under the headings just so that they're in there. And that was stuff like, you know, thank you all for coming to the wedding. Thank the bride and groom for having us today. Thank both sets of parents, you know, for, you know, being so welcoming and, you know, letting us share in their experience and, you know, doing a great job raising these kids. You can say whatever you want, just, you know, make it genuine. Just think of nice things that you can say about them and write it in there. Then's the harder bit. If you want to put jokes into your speech, you've got to kind of think of things that you can poke fun at that are going to get a laugh on the day. Now, I'm sure you can figure that out. I'm sure there's certain things, especially with the groom, that you, you mock them for all the time. And I'm sure that there's a way that you can figure out of how you can put that into the speech to make it acceptable. Especially if it's one where, like I had a more traditional set of families where, like I said, no swearing, no crudeness. So I knew there were certain things that I could mock him for that were more PG, let's just say. Not suitable for diabetics. <laughs> Once you've gone through and you've written stuff under every single bullet point and you've covered everyone on the day, now start to practice it. Start to say it out loud. You could be in your bedroom, you could be in your kitchen, you could be on your way to work saying it in your head. But either way, read it off the paper and start saying it out loud. If it starts to feel a little bit weird and you think, oh, I actually wouldn't say that or I wouldn't say it like this, that's fine. Scrap it or reword it. Reword it into a way that you would say it and then write that wording down on the paper so that now you've got that and you remember it for next time that when you're practicing it. Also, don't be scared of editing it and like scribbling stuff out, writing it over. If you get to the point where you've just filled the page up of scribblings and scratchings and all that, just get a new piece of paper. A piece of paper of what? Like 250 sheets for like a pound. Like a piece of paper is worth less than a penny. Rip it up, chuck it in the recycling. Obviously, after you've transcribed it back over to a new piece and you've got all your current up-to-date stuff, and just keep doing that. Keep practicing it. Keep editing it. Even practice in front of people, especially people who aren't going to be there. Just say, listen, I'm going to be a bit of a pain here, but I couldn't just run by this speech to you. Does this sound right? Or do you think this is maybe a bit too cheeky or, or whatever? Just ask these questions to people. Start practicing it out loud. Start editing it, going down and going through it. And hey, I hate editing stuff as much as the next person, but it will really, really pay off when it comes to the next stage. And stage six, the final stage in the video is the performance itself. If you're not a confident public speaker, don't worry about it too much. Just take the piece of paper with you. Read off the piece of paper. Oh, I would like to thank Tom and Liz today for inviting us all to their wedding. Remember to look up every now and then and address the room. And then when you're looking back down at your paper. And also, I would like to thank... The, the parents of the bride for paying for such a lovely wedding. You know, look down at your paper, look back up. Don't worry about leaving pauses. Pauses can often be good because it leaves the crowd a chance to give you a bit of a clap. It also doesn't, you just start super bad and start talking really, really fast and then they don't know what's going on. They just keep talking, keep talking and they're like, hey, what's going on? They're not even prepared to say what he says. Do you know what I mean? And relax as well when you're up there. Look around the room and just realize the people that are there. These people are not there to judge you. They're there to enjoy a day because there's a lovely couple getting married. And you're just adding to that. And that's what you're there for. And at the same time, when you're up there, have a glance around the room. If you think the speech isn't going too well, in your head, just knock out some stuff that you don't need to say for the rest of the speech. You might be going through it. And I might have said, talk about the bridesmaids. You might not want to talk about the bridesmaids. That's completely fine. Just scrap that out of it. Like I said, that's the part, going back to the last part about practicing and editing it. If you're saying it, you're going, oh, I'm not comfortable saying this stuff about anything about the bridesmaids because I don't know them. I don't want to get involved in any of that stuff. That's completely fine. Just scrap it. But it's good to have it in there from the start because at least you can write something, have something to say. And if you decide you don't want to do it, then just get rid of it. But if you don't do it from the beginning, then you kind of 
already behind, aren't you? Another thing is be confident. You were picked for a reason. You were picked because they like you. They probably love you as a friend, don't they? Or even as a family member, if you are a family member. They want you to be a part of their wedding because you can add to their wedding. Now, you don't need to be the funniest person in the world. You don't need to be the most emotional person in the world. Just be you, you know, that's who they picked. They picked you specifically. So take confidence in that, that they want you to be involved in their wedding. Now, a lot of people like to sit back and go, oh no, I don't want to ruin their big day. But don't worry about that. As long as you've done all your due diligence, as long as you've done your research, like all the stuff I've talked about today, how long have you got? What's the tone of it going to be like? What's the audience going to be like? As long as you know all that stuff, and you've written it out and you've practiced it, just do your job. And hey, after all that, if you're still not confident in writing a best man speech or performing one, get in touch with me and uh, hey, if you pay me enough money, I might just write one for you. I hope this has been handy for you. If it has, please hit the thumbs up button. Please hit the subscribe button and ding the notification bell. I would genuinely really, really appreciate that. Drop me a comment down below if there's anything in this video that didn't make sense or anything in this video that you might like me to clarify, check the comments, it might be in there already. I might have picked up on something in the editing process and gone, hey, I've not mentioned that, I can mention it. Uh, also, in the description down below, I'll post a link to the best man speech that I did, so you can check that out for yourself. I'll be honest with you, this was before stand-up, so I'm not a great deliverer on the day. I wish I had a video like this back then when I was writing one so that it could help me to kind of deliver it a little bit better. And that's why I'm doing this video is because I want to help people because this is exactly what I did. When I was writing one or when I was told that I had to write one, I researched it online. That's the first thing that I did. I went on YouTube and I typed in best man speech and I just started watching them. And then some of them, I, I didn't really get along. I just thought, eh, it's not great. This one, this is, I don't like this one. I don't like that one. And I thought I would love it if someone just broke down the process for me. And that's why I thought I'd do this handy six step guide for you so that you could understand what I did, at least in mine. Now, the, it's not a perfect process and there's no one way to do the right thing. There's many different ways that you can do the right thing. This is just one of them that I found effective. And, that, and especially all my years, you know, writing jokes and then delivering them on stage in front of a crowd, things that I've picked up on, things that it can help. In five, ten years' time, I'll probably look back on this and go, wow, could have, I've told them about this and told them about that, but I think this is a good starting point for you all when you're writing your speech to do that. Right, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you all very, very much for watching, especially if you clicked on all those buttons for me down below. I really, really appreciate it. I hope it goes well. If it does, uh, drop me a comment and let me know that as well. Let me know how it went. And yeah, with that, I am out. Thank you very, very much for watching.